Let's get more on this now with Michael Markovic, senior fixed income strategist at Credit Suisse. He joins us now live from Zurich. Michael, good morning. Thanks very much for joining us. Good morning. Bill Gross yesterday saying that default may still prove inevitable for some European nations. Do you agree? Well, I would say without the stability package and without the help of the European Central Bank, uh, I, would, I would certainly agree to a certain point here. But since now we have uh, this new structure and this new fund in place, which will help to ease some of the pressure on these countries, uh, I'm not as convinced uh, as, as other market participants but maybe. It, but as Caroline was saying there, you know, credit markets are showing signs of strain, aren't they? Well, credit markets in general, yes, uh, as, as equity is showing signs of, of certain stress. But we have to see how, for example, these peripheral countries have traded since the ECB has stepped in. Look, for example, where Portugal yields are trading in two-year segments. They have been nearly to 6%. Now they're somewhere 2%. Italy, two-year uh, two yields for Italian bonds are trading below 2%. So the measures uh, taken by the ECB and by the European Commission have been successful thus far in stabilizing. But they've been buying, the, they've been buying the short end, haven't they? What about the 10-year segment of the bond market, Italy, Spain, going back to levels mm -hmm. before the, the $1 trillion announcement of a few weeks ago? Well, I'm, I'm not really convinced that they are now currently uh, above these levels. Uh, I have heading to say, I know them. that they have trading, they are heading towards them, mm. but, but uh, again, what is important here simply to put uh, into perspective is that if you have a 10 year yield of 450 for Spain or for Italy, this is by far as not as catastrophic as uh, 6 or 7% as it has been before. And here the stabilization measures have been successful and what is important, uh, most of that debt is very short in maturity so they have a duration which is certainly below 10 years uh, and therefore what counts for them is this immediate, uh, intermediate sector of the yield curve between 2 and 5 years and this is now very stable, it has come down and therefore it's a stabilizing factor in that it has not increased so these yields have not increased for example during the last sell of inequities so you see that the stabilization measures are working here. We had RBS on a, uh, earlier this week, they said that the ECB's got to do a lot more buying, not just of public, public debt, but private debt as well. Is that the answer? Um, I'm not as convinced here. The ECB has kept this, uh, this option open uh, also to start uh, uh, buying uh, private debt. But we will see if this is really the avenue that uh, the, the ECB wants to go. Uh, thus far, the focus is, is on, on the sovereign bond uh, purchases, and uh, I would say at this stage it is, uh, it is enough uh, to stabilize the market. So if you're an investor, Michael, and you're thinking, yes, I'd fancy a bit of European debt today, uh, where and what portion of the curve should we be buying? Uh, in general, when, when we look at how the yield, uh, how the bond market has developed, especially for Germany, we have to advise most of the clients to be very short positions uh, uh, in, in, their duration, in their duration position because the risk of high yields is simply very, very high. We know that uh, the safe haven flows have, have really biased the two-year segments towards unprecedented low levels, which in our view are totally unsustainable. Therefore, we recommend investors to be positioned in floaters. Uh, this gives them the best protection uh, because we believe that yields will have to head higher uh, as soon as also the equity markets and the credit markets start to stabilize again. W what about the, the German 10-year, I mean, lowest level this week mm -hmm. since 1989? Yeah. Where is that heading? Yeah. Uh, in our view, the yields have to go higher, mm. and you've seen that yesterday in the participation of the auction. It was the lowest participation yeah. for the five-year auction since years, uh, and the participation for Portugal bonds was, for example, much higher. So you see the demand for real money is not there. It is safe haven flow driven. It's driven primarily by the future market. And therefore, for us, uh, our advice to the clients is really to avoid this uh, intermediate to longer segment of the German yield curve. Ma there is only correlation value here, no total return value. Michael, thanks for joining us today. We'll speak to you very soon. Michael Thank Markovic there from Credit Suisse.